Good morning, everyone. I'm Nadine. Today, my topic is a fuller definition of sin. We've been digging into 2 Chronicles 7.14 and corporately fasting, and I want to ask God to reveal um, what it is He'd like us to turn from as we're, we're praying this together. So say it with me, the verses, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So Holy Spirit, we, we invite you now to come and reveal what needs to be revealed so that we can understand what sin is a little bit more fully. So what does it mean to say that I'm a sinner? It's one of those words I hear a lot in church and it doesn't really resonate with my heart because I associate sin with merely doing bad because I've spent much of my life avoiding criticism and trying to be good um, at a fundamental level. It's been difficult for me to understand what sin is without feeling shameful. And so God calls me a wonderful, marvelous work, and yet at the same time, we are all sinners. So this, uh, this does coexist, but if I'm stuck in thinking of sin only as um, this black and white, I'm doing wrong, doing right, doing good, doing bad, then I completely miss, I think, um, the deeper shades of what this means. So I want to offer a different way of thinking about sin. Uh, sin is a separation in the partnership between us and God, this, a distance in this relationship that Jesus came to offer us, and which was intention, his intention from the, from the beginning of creation. Sin came into the world through Adam and Eve and brought death. And Paul talks about this in Romans 5.12 when he said that, that the death that was created, um, and, and he was not just talking about the death of animals, you know, because they would have to kill the animals to get clothing. He was talking about the the intimate relationship that was lost between Adam and Eve, and they would no longer be able to share that in the same way. God had a plan to bring about that intimacy again, but they were they were losing something really precious. And the separation from God that that I experience moves me away from getting the encouragement that I need after a hard day. And if I don't get to take that walk with God in the garden, proverbial garden, I am in my garden. <laughs> then I can't lean on the strength that he has for me. Uh, and so I stay connected with him in journaling and in time with him. But when there is a distance between God and I, then I'm robbed of the safety he wants to provide for me, the guidance he wants to give me when I'm facing worry or jealousy or fear. And it's, you know, we, we, we say that we everyone's a sinner. I sin all the time. But uh, even though Jesus came to bring that intimacy back, with God, I continue to pull away. I think we all do. We continue to pull away, to go our own way, to say what we feel like saying, to respond to people in what we believe is righteous anger, all this kinds of stuff. So, and, and I don't perceive that what I'm doing isn't necessarily what God would invite me to do. And that's, that's sin. And it looks, doesn't look particularly sinful to me, but you know, every time I get scared because of something, maybe over my own life or over the life of my children, then really um, I'm not remembering that God is holding me sacredly, that, that he's got my kids. And that even though I might look not see my fear as something sinful, God really sees the separation that, and feels saddened because I'm missing out on the trust and the peace of, of just being in that connection with him where I know he's got us. Or maybe if I'm jealous, then I've, I don't know God as a faithful provider. And maybe I need that, this opportunity where these feelings are getting stirred up so that I can be strengthened in that way. And so when I question why something, I don't get something I think I need, it can pull me away from believing that God is good. So he maybe he's providing this opportunity so that I can grow in this way. He wants to partner with us in every area of our lives, our, our relationships, our, um, our parenting, our jobs, our thoughts, everything. And so if you find that there's some area of distance in your life, I think this is the repentance that God is, is asking of us to turn back to him 
to draw close to his strong and capable way. He's fierce and incomprehensible. He is far grander than I certainly give him credit for. And uh, I, I use my dog, Mrs. Darcy, as an example. <laughs> when I take her for a walk, she's a uh, dachshund mix and she's super stubborn. And she likes to be the one that decides where we're going and which tree to sniff and which corner to take a turn at. And I have different plans. And sometimes I let her kind of do her own thing. Um, but sometimes she feels that, that, that choke because she's pulling and I'm staying still. And, and the difference between this example and really the way God walks with us is that God lets us go. You know, and not that he lets us go, but he lets us, he won't intervene in our wills. You know, he lets us cross the street. If we're hell bent on doing that, then if we're going to ignore his cautions and ignore his tug in our spirit. He's, he's not going to stop us. And, and the story of Eve in, in Genesis 3, 6 is um, a good example of this. Um, it says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. So God doesn't stop Eve from disobeying. Eve reasoned in her own mind that the tree was good. God's instruction was clear and the serpent even asked her, did God really say that? And she repeated exactly what God had said. So she knew, but on some level, I think she must have thought God was withholding some good from her. God offered her all of the garden except for this one single tree. But Eve saw lack. She saw what she didn't have. And perception is everything because our perceptions of what good and bad are off, often are way off, just like Eve's was, Eve's perceptions. And Eve didn't have all the information and God doesn't give us all the information. She didn't understand what it really meant to eat of the tree of knowledge and good, of good and evil. She didn't understand that her eyes would be open to all of the stuff that God was sparing her. And God knows what we need to know and what is not necessary. And his intention is to help us through everything that challenges us. We aren't asked to be these mindless followers, but partners walking together it would be impossible for me when my kids were really little to explain to them all the reasons why I wanted them to hold my hand when we were crossing the street. And that's kind of a super simplified. I mean, these analogies are really simple. And I know sin is really tricky sometimes and, and subtle. And, but it, God's ways really are an easy yoke, right? He says that. And, and so if I would try to explain all these things to my kids when they were little, they, like, they wouldn't really grasp it. But I can tell them what they can grasp, like take my hand and let me show you how to look both ways. Understanding that someday the, that that connection with me will stay with them and they'll have greater understanding in time about the whys. And, and I too look back on some of the things that God was saying no to and go, uh... I see, I see a little bit at least. So back to this question of what we're being invited to turn from. And if you're unsure about where God's inviting you to repent in this season for yourself, for your family, for your community, your nation, or whatever it is, um, I would invite you to think about doing the opposite of turning from wicked ways. And that might help you get a different angle on this. If instead of turning from your wicked ways, you can think about where can I turn towards God um, and draw more near to God? And, and that really is the, the very opposite of sin, is drawing near, right? So where in my thought life is there fear? Where am I angry? Where is there frustration or sadness or impatience? Your, your job is not to stop bad behavior and to be good and to make all your negative thoughts disappear. Your, your job is to let the Spirit partner with you. You're not supposed to know how to navigate these things or this time with the virus and everything going on. You're not supposed to know how. And you don't have to have a fabulous attitude about it. You just need to be willing. Because apart from the vine, we can do nothing, like it says in John 15, 5. And so I'd invite you, give God a chance to um, inform, inform your thinking on this and be open to how those responses might come. They might not come like flashes of lightning. 
And I'll remind you as well that no amount of sin can separate us from God's love. So he'll never stop loving us. But I guarantee you, in my experience, I stop sensing that love. I stop remembering that because I, when I disconnect from him, when I lose that intimacy, then that separation, that sin makes me feel really alone because I am alone. And he is inviting me, no, come back. You're not alone. Um, and I can always turn my face. And in an instant, I'm not alone again. So the goal is not to lead a sinless life. Um, God does not expect our perfection. He really desires our direction. And the, the wonderful thing about walking with him is the closer I am to God, the easier it is to catch those subtle little tricky things of, of temptation and ways that want to separate me. Forgiveness is found in Jesus. And Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, hanging out with the Father, spending time with the Father, and he welcomes us there too. So pray with me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that your very presence that walked through the garden with Adam and Eve is here with us right now. I want to confess I have walked alone so much of my life and even through this very day. And I want this partnership with you and whatever areas of my life I can be drawing closer to you. I could be asking for our nation to be drawing closer to you. God, we, we just want to bring that before you. And thank you for your patience with us. I pray you would bring direction to every person that's here watching and listening and help us to see where we need to repent, where we need to turn for, from our wicked ways and turn our faces towards you, O oh, beautiful God. And we pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance I believe that you are my fortress and you are my portion you are my hiding place I believe through every battle through every heartbreak through every circumstance I believe you are my fortress, you are my fortune, you are my hiding place. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. You meet me here today. Mercies are new. All my fears and doubts, they can all come true. Cause I can't stay long when I'm here with you. It's a new horizon. 
Thank you. 